Hello, in this third part of my electromagnetic spectrum series, I'll be talking about safety and some of the things that we need to watch out for in regards to electromagnetic waves. Those would be radio waves, cell phone signals, uh, Wi-Fi, and anything like that. So stick around. So I've pulled up a bunch of different resources that I'm going to go through with you today to maybe help you better understand uh, the regulations and safety concerns when in regards to especially cell phones and internet, but uh, overall radio frequencies and electromagnetic waves. So to start off, there's the American Cancer Society. Uh, the American Cancer Society is a nationwide community-based volunteer voluntary health organization dedicated to eliminating cancer as a major health problem. Our global headquarters are located in Atlanta, Georgia, and we have regional and local offices throughout the country to ensure we have a presence in every community. And they have a bunch of information about the American Cancer Society. One of the pages that they have on here, I'd like to pull it up, you can, I'll link it below. It says microwaves, radio waves, and other types of radio frequency radiation. Now, we hear radiation and we think like uh, the frogs with extra eyes and things with extra legs. That's going to, that's the, the ionizing type of radiation, and we'll get into that in a minute. That's the dangerous type of radiation, but radiation is any time that energy is being released and coming out. If I have a campfire in my backyard, I can, I could touch that fire and feel the heat directly, which I wouldn't want to do. Um, I could have the wind blow towards me and blow that hot air straight towards me, the air that's coming off the fire. Not that fires create air, but there is hot air above the fire. And then I can also feel that heat, even if the wind doesn't blow towards me. That's like if you have a fire in your, in your, uh, in your house, in the, you know, in your fireplace, and there's a glass uh, cover on it. You can still feel that heat, and that's because of radiation. Radiation is just when when energy is is being transferred. So, um, what is radio frequency radiation? It's the emission, the sending out of energy from any source. X rays are an example of radiation, which I talked about. But so is the light that comes from the sun and the heat that is constantly coming off our body. So radiation, that word, is not a bad thing. It's not something to worry about or be scared about. If you're uh, standing near someone and you feel the heat coming off their body, it's probably radiation. Now, if you're touching them, that's a different type of heat transfer. Um, but radiation, just that energy being uh, sent out. When talking about radiation and cancer, many people think of specific kinds of radiation, such as x-rays or the radiation made by nuclear reactors. Those are the types that can be dangerous. But there are other types of radiation that act differently. Radiation exists across the spectrum from high energy, so high frequency radiation, to very low energy, low frequency radiation. This is sometimes referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum, which I've talked about. And I'm going to skip this part because I talked about that. Um, Actually, examples of high energy radiation include X-rays and gamma rays. They, as well, um, they as well as some higher energy UV radiation coming from the sun, are called ionizing radiation. So remember, there's a difference between ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing means that they have enough energy to remove an elect electron from an atom or a molecule. This can damage the DNA inside of our cells, which can result in cancer. Now, our body, most of the time, it has these things that double checks that DNA. And if it finds a cell that replicated and it says, hey, that DNA is wrong, it'll actually kill that cell. Uh, but sometimes uh, that doesn't work and sometimes it can turn into cancer. And ionizing radiation, where it's destroying that DNA or has the possibility of destroying the DNA, that's really where we have our cancer risks, at least proven cancer risks. Radio frequency radiation, which includes radio waves and microwaves, is at the low energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's even lower energy than light. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute, is a type of non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation has enough energy to move atoms in a molecule around or cause them to vibrate. So remember the microwave, I talked about the microwave, how the microwaves are sent in and it uh, adds energy to the water molecules, getting them to move, adding temperature, that's what they can do. They're not breaking down the DNA, uh, but not enough to ionize. 
right? RF radiation has a lower energy than some other types of non-ionizing radiation like visible light and infrared. So I hear people worried about cell phone towers or cell phones or Wi-Fi. Oh, it causes cancer. It's going to make us sick. Um, the higher energy stuff is our visible light and we're not worried about our visible light. Right? Nobody's saying, oh, we need to completely block out the sun because that visible light is causing issues. We, uh, we put sunscreen on to block the UV because that's higher energy. It's ionizing. It can destroy the DNA in our cells. But as we move to that other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, let me pull that up. As we move to the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, and I use Wikimedia, by the way, for all of my all of my uh, images. The reason why is they're royalty free. Most of them are, and then you have to give credit. So let me show you the spectrum again. So when we were looking at the electromagnetic spectrum that we were talking about, right? If we have visible light, this is visible light, what we can see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, those are the electromagnetic waves. Anything this way is ionizing. It can destroy the DNA in our cells and can lead, possibly lead to cancer. So that ultraviolet that we block out with sunscreen, the x-rays that we use to obviously take x-rays of our bodies and the gamma rays. Those are the really dangerous ones that we know cause cancer and other uh, negative health effects, especially at higher levels. As we move to this way, this is less energy than visible light. So all these things, it's bigger than our cells and it's not breaking down the DNA. And as far as we know, there's no evidence showing that there's a cancer risk. Now, I don't think this is a situation like they used to say that smoking didn't cause cancer, right? This is, this is, they're saying electromagnetic waves do cause cancer, but they're saying the high energy ones do. The low energy ones don't, but they can cause the heating of tissue. That would be our cells. And we'll get to that in a minute. So going back here, if RF radiation is absorbed in large enough amounts by materials containing water, such as food, fluids, and body tissue, it can produce heat. So it can heat up our bodies. This can lead to burns and tissue damage. Although RF radiation does not cause cancer by damaging DNA in cells the way ionizing radiation does, there has been concern that some forms of non-ionizing radiation might have biological effects that could have affect that could result in cancer in some circumstances. Okay, so this is sort of the concern that people are having. So if we're looking here, how are people exposed to RF radiation? People can be exposed to RF radiation from both natural and man-made sources. Natural sources would be outer space in the sun, the sky, including lightning strikes, the earth itself. Most radiation from the earth is infrared, but a tiny fraction is RF. Man-made, we do broadcasting radio and all those other things that I talked about, okay? All right. Some people can have significant RF exposure as part of their jobs, right? This includes PVC welders, people who maintain antenna towers that broadcast communication signals, and people who use or maintain radar equipment. So if you're working directly with high power antennas for your job, you are around radio frequencies a lot. I see these people post on YouTube and they talk about, oh, I'm putting up these 5G towers and I've been warned about all these health effects that can happen. Well, yeah, if your head is half a foot away from an antenna, putting out a bunch of RF energy in the direction of your head, you need to limit your exposure, right? But the general person, and I'll get to it in a minute, I, general person is never going to be exposed to the levels that are, that are known to be dangerous. So most people are exposed to much lower levels of man-made RF radiation every day due to the presence of RF signals all around us. They can come from radio and television broadcasts, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, cell phones, and other sources. Now, I talked about these, so I'm going to go a little bit further. Cell phones and cell phone towers use RF, radio frequency, radiation to transmit and receive signals, which I talked about in part one of the series. Some concerns have been raised that these signals might increase the risk of cancer and research in this area continues. Now they do have more information on that, but here they talk about researchers using two main type of studies to try to determine if something might cause cancer. They do lab studies and studies in people. All right. Now you can go through this. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but 
let's go down here. Studies of people who have been exposed to RF radiation at their jobs, such as people who work around or with radar equipment, those who service communication antenna and radio operators have found no clear increase in cancer risk, okay? So if I had a job working on cell phone towers or on radio, on, on radar towers or anything where I'm being exposed to large amounts of RF radiation, there's no link between that job and getting cancer. So you as a normal person who does not work on these towers, you definitely, you even have a lower risk of getting cancer when they're saying there isn't even a risk of cancer that they can find. All right. What do expert agencies say? Several national and international agencies study exposures and substances in the environment to determine if they can cause cancer. The American Cancer Society looks to these organizations to evaluate the risks based on evidence, evidence, right? Important from laboratory, animal, and human research. All right. The IARC, International Agency for Research on Cancer, has stated that there is limited evidence that RF radiation causes cancer in animals and humans and classifies RF radiation as possibly carcinogenic to humans. This was based on the findings of a possible link in at least one study between cell phone use and a specific type of brain tumor. IARC considers the evidence overall to be limited, this is important, because of the conflicting findings and methodological limitations in some of the studies. Now, this is really important. When we are doing science, hopefully you started learning in middle school how to actually follow the scientific method. And the thing is, if we don't follow the scientific method correctly and we don't do our studies correctly what ends up happening is we can draw incorrect conclusions so what they're saying is that hey there were these uh there what, was it one okay so there were some findings possible findings that maybe things can cause that rf can cause cancer now i remember when i was younger um the pink packets of sweetener at the restaurants they're saccharin. And I remember it used to say, uh, saccharin may cause cancer in some laboratory animals. And it was on the back of it. And so when I go to get a sweetener, was I choosing the pink packet? No, I was choosing the blue or the normal sugar because I didn't want cancer. Then it turns out the reason why they believed that saccharin caused cancer was because they would feed an animal something like three pounds of, no, I'm making up that number, but an enormous amount of saccharin and only saccharin and just to see what would happen. Now, if I fed you only pizza for the rest of your life, there are going to be some negative health effects, but that doesn't mean all pizza is bad for you, right? I could, I could say, uh, you know, headphones, headphones are bad for you. Uh, if I put them on your head and I turn them on full blast and I leave them on all day, it will lead to hearing loss, but that doesn't mean using uh, using headphones is going to cause hearing loss. It's all about how we use it. So this study, they're saying, eh, you know what? There were some conflicting findings. It may not have been a good study, but to be safe, they're saying, eh, maybe there's a possible carcinogenic effect to humans. But listed above, they said, we found no link to even these people that are working directly with high levels of radiation. All right. Does RF radiation cause any other health problems? So studies in the labs in animals, the main effect of exposure to RF are related to heating, some kind, sometimes called thermal effects. High dose of RF radiation, this is important, high doses can cause uh, a, ri a rise in body temperature even to the point of being fatal. So if I, if I pumped in 100 million watts of energy directly into you in a directional antenna, it could kill you. But that's just like putting on headphones and turning them up all the way. We shouldn't use things that way. And the FCC uh, does limit your exposure. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute. It also said when RF waves are focused on the eye, it can cause cataracts to form. But that's directly focusing RF waves, right? You're not getting that. It isn't clear what effects, if any, RF radiation has at levels of exposure too low to produce heating. High doses, high doses of RF radiation can cause injuries through heating. For example, some people accidentally exposed to large amounts of RF radiation from radar equipment have developed severe burns. So if you're hanging out right by a radar equipment, two feet from it, and they turn it on full blast, you're going to get hurt. That's why they put up signs and fencing trying to keep you away from it. All right. So how do I avoid? Now, 
This says because sources of RF radiation are so common in the modern environment, there's no way to completely avoid exposure to it. But then again, if you listen to what they said earlier, there's really no reason to limit yourself unless you're near high levels of it. And you living your normal life are not near high levels of radiation. It may be possible to lower your exposure to RF radiation by avoiding jobs with increased RF exposure. So those people that post online saying, hey, I'm working on these towers and my and I'm speaking out because I need I need someone to know that we're installing these things and you're going to have all these problems. They're being told that because they're working directly next to it. Keeping away from appliances and equipment that use RF, so like don't stick your face right up by the, the microwave while it's running, especially if it's an old one. Maybe it has uh, some damage to it and some microwaves are leaking out. And using devices that allow mobile phones to be used without placing them against the ear. I'll get to that in a second. So then if we, we move forward, this is a cell phone tower. This is a normal cell phone tower. Let me give credit. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a normal cell phone tower. You've probably seen them in your community. And these are the actual antennas, okay? These little things. So if I was up on the tower and my head was in front of one of those, I would be getting too much radio exposure if it was running uh, at, at a decent level. But farther away, I'm getting less levels. Now they're also directional. This one is pointing directly out. They're all directional. So if I look here and I say, oh my gosh, this is dangerous. Well, the thing is, this is actually directional. It's sending that signal out um, above the roof for the most part. So that the exposure level to here would have had, for them to install it, they would have had to do an environmental survey and made sure that they weren't having too high levels of uh, radio frequency uh, exposure. Now, the reason why and how I can tell you that is the FCC regulates uh, regulates it. So the Federal Communications Commission it says working closely with federal health and safety agencies such as the Food and Drug Administration, the FCC has adopted limits for safe exposures to radio frequency energy. These limits are given in terms of units referred to the to as the specific absorption rate, SAR, which is a measure of the amount of radio frequency energy absorbed by the body when using a mobile phone. So they've looked at what is considered to be safe and what is not safe, and then anything that's going to be approved, and I'll say that in a sec, the FCC requires cell phone manufacturers to ensure that their phones, and this would be the same with Wi-Fi um, or any other radio frequencies that you're going to buy, as long as you're buying it from a, from a, an approved source. If you're buying it from some random seller in China and they're sneaking it through customs, you you may be getting a, a device that does put you at risk at higher levels of RF radiation that'll cause that, that thermal heating, that heating up of your cells that may cause some issues later in life. But as long as you're buying quality equipment that has the FCC approval on it, you should be good. So it requires cell phone manufacturers to ensure that their phones comply with these objective limits for safe exposure. Any cell phone at or below these SAR levels, that is any phone legally sold in the US. So if you're buying some illegal phone, sure, maybe you have something to worry about. But as long as you're buying a, a phone from a reputable company, or at least a, you know, a, a good brand of phone, not one straight from some country that doesn't have these regulations, then it is considered a safe phone as measured by these standards. The FCC limits the FCC limit for public exposure from cellular telephone is an SAR limit of 1.6 watts per kilogram. Now, what you can do is you can go on your phone's website. This one is referring to the iPhone, but every single phone has this. And they talk about the levels that they have tested their device at. And they say the iPhone 11 Pro Max RF exposure, the highest level running at, and we can read through this, uh, it says specific absorption rate refers to the rate at which the body absorbs RF. Uh, during testing iPhone, radios are set to their highest transmission levels. Okay, normally it's not doing that. And placed in position that simulates uses against the head with no separation. So flat against the head, right? Not holding it out a little bit, flat against the head. And when worn or carried against the torso of the body with five millimeter separation. All right, so a tiny bit of separation. To, uh, 
they are saying that they do not go over that SAR limit, 1.6 watts per kilogram. So what that means is, even if it was flat against your head, or right against your body, well, five millimeters away from your body, it will not cause the thermal heating. It actually fulfills the FCC standards where it's considered to be safe. All right. You can look up all your phones on this. Uh, they do have uh, right here. They have a link. It says go to the following website address. You can actually look up the FCC ID on your phone. All right. Now, I had a phone previously uh, from years ago that actually... Uh, it didn't fulfill these standards, and I was surprised that it, that it didn't. So look up your phone and see. I would imagine any phone made in the last 10, 15 years. You're totally fine. All right? So as we look at these, now we could look at what SAR testing does and all that stuff. It says, the bottom line, all cell phones must meet the FCC's RF exposure standard, which is set at a level well below that at which laboratory testing indicates and medical and biological experts generally agree adverse health effects could occur. So this, if you want to base it on science, they're saying our level is much lower than anything anyone's saying that anything could happen at. So it's a lower level than we're seeing any effects, and we're saying those effects don't even really cause Many problems. For users who are concerned with the adequacy of this standard or who otherwise wish to further reduce their exposure, the most effective means to reduce exposure are to hold the cell phone away from the head or body and to use a speakerphone or hands-free accessory. So you could use speakerphone, right? You could plug in headphones and use those. These measures will generally have more much more impact on RF energy absorption than the small difference in SAR between an individual cell phones. Now, I'll tell you, no matter what the, the studies cite, okay, even, even though they say there's nothing to worry about, I would always err on the side of caution. Why not just use your cell phone on speakerphone, right? Why not? Save your phone conversations for private because you shouldn't be walking around anyways speaking in your phone while people are around and put it on speakerphone. All right. Now, they do have some stuff about uh, health concerns. It says, even though no scientific evidence currently establishes a definite link between wireless device use and cancer or other illnesses, and even though all cell phones must establish federal standards for exposure to RF energy, some consumers are uh, skeptical, so people who are buying it, of the science and or analysis that underlies the FCC's RF exposure guidelines. According to some parties, Sorry. Accordingly, some parties recommend taking measures to further reduce exposure to RF energy. The FCC does not endorse the need for these practices. They're saying it's safe. They're saying science says it's safe. But if you're still worried, it provides information on some simple steps that you can take to reduce your exposure to RF energy from cell phones. For example, wireless devices only emit RF energy when you're using them. And the closer the device is to you, the more energy you will absorb. So they're saying use speakerphone, earpiece, or a headset to reduce proximity to the head. While wired earpieces may conduct some energy to the head and wireless earpieces also emit a small amount of RF energy, both wired and wireless earpieces remove the greatest source of RF energy, the cell phone, from proximity to the head and thus can greatly reduce total exposure to the head. Increase the distance between wireless devices in your body and consider texting rather than talking, right? When you're texting, it's using a lot less energy. Some parties recommend that you consider the reported SAR value of wireless devices. However, comparing the SAR of different devices may be misleading. First, the actual SAR varies considerably depending on the conditions of use. The SAR value used for the FCC approval does not account for the multitude of measurements taken during the testing. Moreover, cell phones constantly vary their power to operate in the minimum power necessary for communication. That's the important part there. They're not operating at their maximum all the time. If you have a really bad cell phone signal, yes, it is It is operating at a much higher level, but it's not that high. It's not that much energy. It's still within that safety limit. Operation at maximum power occurs infrequently. Second, the reported highest SAR values of wireless devices do not necessarily indicate that a user is exposed to more or less RF energy from one cell phone than from another during normal use. 
Third, the variation in SAR from one mobile device to the next is relatively small compared to the reduction that can be achieved by the measures described above. Consumers should remember that all wireless devices are certified to meet the FCC maximum SAR standard, which incorporates a considerable safety margin. All right. So even if we are working, even if, well, if you're working on a cell phone tower, yes, of course, there are going to be precautions that you have to follow. But if you are not up on that tower, it is safe to be near, right? If it is put on your, and it was on here, I, I apologize, I, I don't see it, but uh, it was it was on the FCC website as well. If you, even if you have a cell phone tower on the roof of your building, they actually limit how powerful it can be because they want they need to keep it at the safe levels. If it was found that they that there was an antenna on a roof not doing the safe levels, there will be pretty good lawsuit because it could cause that thermal heating that could cause burns, right? If you're not right up next to these antennas, you're fine. So these people lighting the 5G towers on fire throughout the world, um, follow the science. Look at the science. See what the scientists say. Uh, we always say, hey, let's follow the science. Make sure that you're actually looking at good facts. Look at, at good sources. I looked at the American Cancer Society and I looked at the FCC. That's a government website. Now, if you don't trust that, feel free to research your own stuff. Hopefully uh, that wasn't too much over your head. Hopefully it helped you a little bit better understand uh, ionizing versus non-ionizing. Ionizing is the, the kind that breaks down our DNA and can lead to cancer. Non-ionizing, it can cause some thermal heating, heat, um, heating up of the cells if you're if you're too close to something, but we're protected from being too close by these FCC standards. All right. So if you're worried about that, if you think that there's a tower out there that's that's too close to you or whatever, feel free call the FCC and say I'd like information about this, and they can show you whether it's in compliance or not. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everybody.